Hey guys, this is Chris. Welcome back to my project management sandbox. Here we talk about managing projects, career in tech and professional development. So getting back to project management, today we're going to have more kind of an educational video where um, I would like to dive deeper into the most common project management methodologies to break them down for you so that you will understand how do they differ, what are the pros and cons for them, and how to understand what the methodology is currently in front of you, or on the other side, how to understand whether this or that methodology is going to be the most suitable for your current project right now. Uh, to give you some heads up, we're going to be talking about the ancient waterfall and more like up-to-date agile, how do they differ from each other and whether they have anything in common. Let me know in comments if you would want me to break down Scrum and Kanban for you. But now, let's get started. I will share the screen to let you follow my mind map. Well, not only this, we're going to be building it together so that we are on the same page throughout the episodes. So here we are. Um, I'm using Miro for uh, creating mind maps and uh, making visual like presentation so that we can break it down into the actionable items. It's uh, free and it's really handy, so I hope you're okay with this type of uh, exercise right now. So to start it off, let's first define what are the most common project delivery, um, what are the most common steps in delivering projects. Let's, um, let me build some shapes here. So um, according to the best practices, project delivery consists of the five main steps, which are project initiation, sorry, project planning, executing, well, there is obviously a project executing, but let me just use the core word here monitoring and controlling, and project closing. Okay. Hey guys, I would like you to pause for a second and to give this video a like. And not only this, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bells so that you will not lose any of the new episodes I'm going to be posting here on my channel. So, three simple actions, like, subscribe, tip the bell, and we move on. These are the main steps the project is passing through, is passing through when it comes to delivering the product to production. So, let's first talk about waterfall. Let's uh, color it differently so that we can see um, the different components on the screen. I'm sure all of you heard about waterfall. Um, this is, I would say, the most ancient of the methodologies, and this is the very first one that was uh, used in all the software development waterfall. This uh, is called because all of the stages are passed through gradually and they have no overlap in general. So we start from the project initiation, then we fall into planning, then executing, monitoring, controlling, and eventually the project ends up with a closing phase when we are transferring the knowledge of the project to the users or to the client and uh, taking our hands off from it. So this is what waterfall looks like. Not only this, I would like you to be aware of the iron triangle. So what does it mean, the iron triangle? Here we get uh, to the three general project KPIs. In other words, three general items the project um, the project consists of and the three general items we need to account for when it comes to understanding whether the project is on track. This is project scope. The, this is project budget. 
and this is the project timeline so when it comes to waterfall normally these are the projects that have only that much time or that much money to deliver a project and this means that time and money are the general constraints when it comes to waterfall and if we have those constraints on the project most likely waterfall is gonna be like this most suitable methodology whether we have the specific deadline to deliver the project or whether we have the fixed price project when we are not able like to be flexible with the project cost and this means that time and budget are going to constrain our scope of work and the scope of work will be selected based on the amount of time and money that we have to deliver this project so this is what we need to consider when it comes to choosing the waterfall methodology okay now you see what the project delivery flow consists of and how it lays smoothly on waterfall let's take a look now how it overlaps with the child and whether there are any overlaps at all about 20 years ago a child was introduced and let's discuss what are the main differences between waterfall and a child so let's start with the triangle so the, the key benefits of a child is that with a child we are able to deliver the better project and the project of a better quality by getting consistent feedback from the project stakeholders this means with a child we are delivering the scope of work incrementally like giving a small piece of item getting some feedback adapting the rest of the scope again giving a bigger piece of uh, product to the users or to the stakeholders again getting feedback adapting the rest of the scope and so on and so forth this means that with agile the key element we are accounting for is the project scope but what about time and budget we still have those values and there are still the project kpis but with agile we are welcoming changes and this means we are flexible with time and budget because our goal with agile is to deliver the better product by updating and optimizing the project scope so we still have the triangle but with a child we call it inverted triangle as it has only one element in the basis and everything stands on the project scope but what happens with the project management delivery steps again the key project management delivery steps are maintained the same but how can we adapt them to agile so that we can deliver the project incrementally to get frequent feedbacks and to adapt our scope um, to the project needs to the updated goals to the updated priorities and to deliver the better product eventually so first we still start with the project initiation this is something we have to do in any case when we are getting started with the project because during the project initiation uh, we understand what problem we are solving by delivering this piece of work like what is the business goal what is the gap in the market and what is the solution that we are going to deliver basically during the project initiation we are understanding um, the basic project scope and what we are going to give to the end users uh, if you heard about the mvp this is something we are going to like discover what are going to be the mvp features during the project initiation now we still have planning executing and controlling and project closing but how do we adapt all those stages within agile with agile as i have mentioned we are working incrementally so we are defining the smaller pieces work and delivering them to either end users or stakeholders or who is the key audience in order to get feedback and in order to be able to ad adapt and adjust the project scope so this means for each of that increment or attempt to get uh, feedback and to adapt our scope we still need to execute planning executing monitoring and controlling in order to get done with this item with this piece of the project and to eventually receive a feedback so what we do with agile we are 
planning, executing, and con planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling multiple times. If you heard about Scrum, in Scrum we do have sprints, and those three actions from the project management perspective or from the product owner and Scrum master perspectives, we are doing on a regular basis before each sprint of the project. And eventually, when the project is finished, we are still delivering it to the end users and we are closing out our work. Now you see the core differences between Waterfall and Agile and how project management is performing in both um, methodologies. Also, you know what are the key like features and the key criteria on choosing Waterfall or Agile methodologies. So, let me know if you still have any questions. I will be more than happy to respond to them in the comments to this video. Oh, we are done with the workshop for today. I hope that was helpful. So let me know in comments what would you like to learn about the methodologies next time. Don't forget to give it a like and see you in the next video.